my third lecture uh, in module 5 that is uh, the model adequacy checking. Uh, here is the content of uh, this module. Uh, we have uh, already talked about uh, various types of uh, residuals like you know uh, regular residuals, uh, standardized residual, uh, studentized residual and pressed residuals. And also we uh, have talked about uh, two uh, residual plots like you know uh, normal probability plot and uh, plot of residual uh, against the fitted value uh, y i hat. So, what we are going to uh, do today is that uh, we will be talking about uh, plot of residual uh, against the regressor and uh, uh, we will be talking about uh, partial residual plot and uh, finally, we will be talking about the press statistics. Okay, so, uh, first uh, we will be talking about uh, the plot of residual uh, against uh, regressor. Okay, so uh, here we are in the multiple uh, linear regression model setup, uh, multiple linear regression, and uh, we have the response variable y and uh, several regressor variables like you no. Know, x 1, x 2, maybe uh, beta k minus 1, x k minus 1 plus epsilon. So, uh, like residual against y i hat plot, here we will be uh, we will be plotting uh, the residual against the regressor uh, x 1 and the, then again residual against uh, x 2 uh, like that. And uh, uh, this particular plot you know this uh, plot of residual against regressor uh, is important in, in determining relationship between the response variable y and uh, regressor x j. Uh, and also you know uh, this uh, plot are uh, uh, very similar to the plot of uh, uh, I mean the pattern of the plots here in the case of residual against regressor are very similar to the uh, pattern of plot uh, in case of residual versus uh, uh, y i hat. So, in this case also you know here instead of y i hat uh, we will plot some regressor x j and, uh, and here also you know the, uh, the 
residuals containing uh, in a horizontal ba horizontal band is uh, is is desirable and this is uh, treated as you know this this sort of uh, horizontal bond uh, uh, um, band containing uh, all the residuals uh, indicates uh, a satisfactory model uh, and uh, and the open funnel i mean like whether it is uh, Similarly, here also, you know, instead of uh, y i hat, we'll be uh, we'll be plotting in 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 this uh, horizontal axis uh, x j. Uh, so here also, the the uh, outward open funnel uh, indicates that the variance of uh, I mean indicates uh, non-constant variance, like whether it is outward open funnel or inward, uh, inward uh, open funnel uh, that indicates a non constant variance. Uh, similarly, in the case of uh, double bow also for example, x j here and uh, x j here. Uh, so, all these things you know uh, this double bow also indicate non, -con non constant variance. Uh, and, uh, this type of nonlinear nonlinear uh, pattern uh, indicates that the assumed relationship between between uh, between y the uh, regressor uh, the re response variable y and uh, xj uh, is not correct. So that means you know we have to consider the extra terms like you know maybe the higher order uh, regressor like uh, for example uh, xj square or xj q or some transformation uh, on xj for example maybe 1 by xj or uh, maybe log xj so uh, this is what the nonlinear curve uh, indicates so what uh, uh, we learned from this uh, uh, residual against uh, uh, against the regressor plot. Uh, this is important to uh, determine the relationship between between the uh, response variable and a particular uh, regressor uh, xj, and uh, the limitation of this. Uh, um, plot is that it uh, it may not show the uh, marginal effect of x j a particular regressor x j on the uh, response variable. Because what we are doing is that we are plotting uh, residual against uh, a particular regressor and uh, let me tell little bit more about this one. Uh, so, what we do here is that we are plotting uh, E i uh, against a particular regressor x j. Okay. Uh, So, what I show, uh, told that you know the limitation of this plot is that uh, it uh, may not show the marginal effect you need to understand this part you know it uh, this this plot uh, it may not show the marginal effect of a regressor x j given the other regressor x 
in the model. See, we are talking about multiple linear regression. If, if it is simple linear regression, say simple linear regression and there is only one regressor, so uh, y equal to uh, beta naught plus beta 1 uh, xj, uh, beta 1 x. Okay? So, uh, in that case, in case of simple linear regression, there is no difference between, between the plot of E i and uh, y i hat and the plot of E i against x j. So, those two cases are same and I mean the, in case of simple linear regression, the plot of E i against y i hat is, is uh, same as uh, the plot of E i the residual against, uh, against x because there is only one regressor and you know they are linearly uh, related. So, why whether you plot against x or y uh, it does not it does not matter, but uh, in case of multiple linear regression, uh, uh, there is a difference. Yeah, uh, these two cases are not same because there are so many uh, regressors. More than two regressors are there. So what I told here is that the limitation of this uh, um, EI against XJ plot is that. Uh, that may not show the marginal effect of x j given the other regressors in the model. Okay, so, that is why we need to go for uh, partial residual plot. Uh, so, I will try to explain you know the partial residual plot now. Uh, this is an improvement of uh, uh, residual against regressor plot. So, this is called partial residual partial residual plot. Okay. So, what we do here is that uh, uh, here in the partial residual plot, partial residual plot consider the marginal role of the regressor x j given other regressor that are already in the model. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, give the outline of this plot, what, uh, what does this partial residual plot uh, does. And then I will try to explain the logic uh, behind this plot. So, what it does is that uh, in this plot, in this plot, the response variable the response variable. and the regressor say x j are both regressed
against the other regressor. in the model and the residuals are obtained for each regressor regression. So, uh, what I told is that you know the, this partial residual plot uh, considered the marginal role of uh, what is this marginal role of the regressor x j uh, given the other regressor that are that are already in the model. So, since it is, uh, since we are talking about uh, talking about uh, uh, multiple linear regression here, uh, we need to uh, consider the uh, the role of you know. Uh, the marginal role of one regressor in the presence of other regressors in the model. So, the technique is that you know first uh, you uh, uh, first the both the response variable y and the particular reg regressor x j both are regressed uh, against the other regressors in the model. So, here the response variable y is regressed on uh, all the regressors except x j and similarly x j is also regressed on the remaining regressors. Okay. Uh, and then the plot, the plot of, so we will get two residuals from, from these two regression feet and uh, the plot of these residuals. Uh, then we plot So, there are two residuals, one is the, there is two regression model we are trying to fit. Uh, one is uh, we are trying to regress the response variable uh, on all the regressors except x j. So, this is one regression model and the other one is that uh, x j is regressed on the remaining regressor. So, this is the second regression model. From these two, once you have the, uh, once you have the uh, fitted uh, model for uh, for these two regressions, uh, uh, these two regression model, you will get the corresponding uh, um, residual values, and then you plot those two residuals to get the uh, this margin marginal residual plot. Okay, the plot of these two residuals against each others. Uh, show the marginal role of regression regressor x j on on response variable y in the presence of in the presence of other regressor in the model. Okay. Uh, this partial regression uh, plot is little difficult concept you know I will try I will try my best to explain it. Uh, just now I will give one example uh, which consists of two regressors that means I will I will take uh, an example of multiple linear regression model with uh, two regressors and I will try to explain the uh, uh, 
the technique first and then after that I will try to give the, uh, uh, the logic behind you know the idea behind the partial uh, residual plot. Uh, I said that you know this, uh, this partial residual plot considered the marginal role of x j. So, you need to understand what I mean by the marginal role of x j uh, uh, on the response variable in the presence of other regressors in the uh, in the model. Okay. So, uh, so there, there are several regressors I told. Okay, let me just first give the um, uh, give an example to illustrate the technique uh, what I explained here and uh, then I uh, will be talking about the the logic behind this partial residual plot. Okay. So, here is the uh, example here. Let me illustrate the uh, technique first. The illustration. So, consider multiple linear regression model with two regressors. x 1 and x 2. So, my model is of this form y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus epsilon. Suppose for example, I first I am interested to know the marginal role of x 1 on the response variable y in the presence of x 2. Okay. So, I am interested uh, suppose we are interested in in marginal role of x 1 on response variable y in the presence of in the presence of other regressor in the model. Okay, so, according to the technique, uh, what I will do is that uh, there are two regressors x 1 and x 2 and I am interested to uh, see the marginal role of x 1 on the uh, response variable. Okay. So, first what I will do is that my uh, aim is to uh, uh, eliminate the effect of x 2. See there are two regressors x 1 and x 2. I am interested to I am interested to uh, uh, to see the marginal role of x 1 on y. So, what I will do is that I will just first I will eliminate the, the um, effect of x 2 from the response variable y and uh, for that what I have to do is that I have to fit a model between uh, I'm, I mean I will I'll, I'll regress y on x 2 first and uh, from there the residual will give me the part of variability in y which is not explained by the by x 2. And then I expect x 1 to exp, uh, I, I want to see how much of that residual x 1 can explain. So, this is the idea you know uh, uh, I am interested in the marginal role of I repeat you know I am interested in marginal role of x 1 uh, on the response variable uh, y. So, first what I will do is that I will eliminate the 
part of variability that can be explained by x2. That means, I am just eliminating the effect of x2 from y. So, that remaining part I want x1 to explain and I will see how much uh, the remaining variability can be explained by x1. So, that is what the basic idea uh, behind this uh, uh, behind this marginal uh, sorry par partial residual plot. Um, so, to eliminate the effect of x2 uh, from y or to note the part of variability which cannot be uh, which is not been explained by x2, first I need to regress y on x2 and I will calculate the residual. That is the residual part is the part of variability that is not explained by, by the regressor x2. Okay. So, uh, first what I will do is that I will regress, I will regress y on x2. That is same as saying that uh, in general in case of multiple uh, many regressors, regress y on all regressors except x1, if you are interested in finding the marginal role of x1. Since here are here we have only two regressors, I am regress uh, I am regressing y, I mean uh, y on x2 only. Um, suppose my fitted model is y i hat equal to theta naught hat plus theta 1 hat x i 2. Okay, so, this is the fitted model uh, between the res response variable and x 2 and I want to introduce one notation here. I uh, will put bracket 1 that means, that response variable has been regressed on on all the regressors except x 1. Okay, this is the meaning of this. So, the regressor variable uh, is uh, has been uh, regressed on all the regressors except x 1. Okay. And once we have this fitted model, uh, we can compute the part of variability in y which has not been explained by the second residu uh, the by the second regressor okay so that is the residual uh, residual ei is generally we write yi minus yi hat but here i'll write yi minus this is the observed value and this is the fitted okay when y is regressed on x2 uh, this is the fitted value is yi hat 1 and I will put one bracket 1 here to, to denote that this is the residual and also I will put y here. Okay. To, uh, little bit uh, complicated notation, but uh, this is the residual obtained from this uh, regression. Okay. And uh, also uh, according to my uh, partial residual plot technique, it says that in this plot, uh, the response variable and the regressor x j. Suppose, I am interested to find the marginal role of x j uh, on the response variable. Uh, so, I will regress response variable and the regressor x j on the remaining regressors. So, here also I will regress x 1 on x 2. So, regress x 1 on x 2 and suppose my fitted model is x i 1 equal to alpha naught hat simple linear regression model alpha 1 hat 
and I am regressing on x2, so xi2, this is my fitted model. And, uh, and uh, so, th this basically uh, you know uh, see how much of the variability in x1 can be uh, can be explained by the other regressor. Sometime uh, they are not completely independent, uh, there might be little bit of dep dependence between them. So, we just want to eliminate the uh, effect of uh, or the contribution of the other regressors on 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 the on the regressor we are interested on. Uh, so here the residual is E I one x I'll put here. Maybe little uh, complicated notation. Uh, x I one is the um, original value of the first regressor i i am talking about the ith observation minus x i 1 hat. Okay. And then what uh, this uh, partial residual plot does is that I am talking about partial residual plot. Uh, does is that it 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 plots it plots e i one y against e i one x. So this plot is called the partial residual plot, whatever it might be. Uh, we will slowly establish the relation between these two, you know, uh, in case uh, if you if we are assuming that uh, the relation is linear, then what we can expect from from the plot of this, okay. Uh, well, uh, what pattern we expect uh, in the partial residual plot. Before that, so this is an example, uh, I hope you understood the technique at least uh, of the partial residual plot. So, it says that you first regress uh, both, uh, suppose uh, if I am interested to uh, find the marginal role of uh, x j on the regressor y, then I will regress both y and x j on the remaining regressors and uh, so there will be two regression model and you find the uh, residuals uh, corresponding to those two uh, regression models and plot them to get the partial residual plot. Okay. Uh, so, this is uh, an example uh, which consists of only two regressors. Uh, next, I uh, will just uh, introduce the notations, the same concept only, I will just introduce the quote notations for uh, in in general case when there will be you know say for example k minus one regressor instead of only uh, two regressors well so you know everything and uh, and just uh, some more notation here in in case of say for example there are k minus one regressor regressors instead of only two regressors okay so the partial the partial residual of y for xj is defined as e i j y the same notation here uh, i for the ith observation is equal to y i minus y i j i hope you 
understand the notation. So, this is the fitted value when uh, the response variable has regressed on all the regressors except x j. So, in my previous example, uh, this is what you know this is nothing but the partial residual of y for x 1. This is the partial residual of y for x 1 okay? and this is the partial residual of y for x j. Okay? So, where y i j hat is a prediction prediction of y i from a regression model using all regressors except x j. Okay? So, I hope it is clear now and, and this one uh, this e i j y represents the variability in y i that is not explained uh, not explained by a model that exclude that excludes the regressor x j. So, this is the part of variability uh, which is part of variability in y i uh, which is not been explained by the by all the regressors except x j. Okay. Uh, so, what uh, in other words also uh, what does this mean is that uh, the uh, this is you know uh, sort of the effect of all the all the other regressors except x j has been removed from the response variable y. So, we want to see how much of this variability uh, which is remained unexplained e will be how much of that variability how much of this variability can be explained by by x j. So, the, uh, uh, so uh, the dependence I mean the dependence of uh, of the uh, so, th this complicated you know this uh, uh, this uh, uh, residual e i j y uh, is is the part of variability in the response variable y which is not been explained by all the regressors except x j that means uh, that residual um, uh, represent sort of you know the effect of all the other regressors except x j has been removed from the response variable y and we want to see how much of this variability can be explained by uh, by x j alone. 
So, that is the marginal role of x j uh, to explain the variability in the response variable y. Okay? So, this is uh, what uh, we want to mean by the marginal role of x j. Uh, so, this is the notation corresponds to y. Now, the partial residual of x j, the similarly x j is regressed on the remaining regressors. So, the partial partial residual of x j is, is defined as is defined as E i for i th observation j for j th regressor. We put the notation x here. So, this is x i j minus x i j hat. So, this is uh, the fitted value obtained when the j th regressor is regressed on the remaining regressors where x i j hat is a prediction, the prediction of the regressor value x i j from a from a regression of from a regression of x j on all other regressor variable. Okay. So similarly, you know. Uh, this uh, e i e i j x represent the variation the variation in x j that cannot be explained by other regression. So, this is quite a routine thing. Um, okay. and now, uh, uh, we have understood the technique of uh, partial, uh, res partial residual plot and uh, we know little, I mean we have some idea about you know uh, the logic behind this partial residual plot, why, why it is so. And uh, next uh, see what we do is that we, we fit two regression model uh, and uh, we get two residuals. And now, uh, our aim is to uh, find out the relation between these two residuals, uh, whether these two residuals are uh, linearly related or there is some other relation between these two uh, these two residuals okay well so uh, a little difficult uh, uh, okay uh, multiple linear regression model we are in this setup and uh, we are interested to find the marginal role of xj on the remaining on 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 response variable y in the presence of other regressors okay so in the multiple linear regression model in matrix form in matrix notation the model is y equal to x beta plus epsilon okay you know what is this x okay you know what is this y y is the uh, vector of y1, y2, yn and beta is the vector of. So, this x is a is a n cross k vector uh, sorry n cross k matrix 
and beta is k cross 1. So, beta consists of beta naught, beta 1 up to beta k minus 1 and epsilon is epsilon 1, epsilon 2 up to epsilon n. Uh, what is this x? Uh, x is equal to uh, 1, x 1 1, x 2, x 1 2, x 1 k right and then 1 x 2 1. So, this is the for the second observation x 2 2 x 2 k and 1 x n 1 x n 2 x n k. So, these are the rows are corresponds to the observation. So, there are n observations and the columns are corresponds to. The, so, this is the column associated with the second regressor x 2. Okay. So, this one is x 1 for example and you call it say x naught and this is I should write my k minus 1, k minus 1, k minus 1, x k minus 1. Okay. Well, so what I want to do is that I want to break it into two parts. Uh, one is x j, x j is, is the x matrix except the jth column. So, I want to remove the jth regressor from this matrix. So, x j is the matrix obtained from x by removing the jth column here. So, similarly b j, b j is also you know before it was beta naught, beta 1 up to beta k minus 1. Now, I am just removing the b j from this vector. So, this is called b j. Now, I will add those two things what I have removed from here, I will add here that is x j. So, x j is the jth column and b j what I have removed the vector the coefficient from this coefficient uh, vector okay, plus epsilon. I hope you understand it. Uh, this is just uh, adjustment you know once you remove from here and then again you add it here. Well, and also we know about the hat matrix. If this is the model, then the hat matrix is H equal to uh, x, x prime x inverse x prime, but if I consider only this part, uh, if I just uh, remove the jth regressor from the model, then uh, that means x j here, x j here, j here, j here, then this is called h j. Okay. So, this is my h j. Now, what I will do is that I will uh, multiply this. So, this is you know this is the Hadamard uh, idempotent matrix. I will just multiply uh, i minus h j uh, left multiply this matrix uh, in this equation. So, what I will get is that I will get i minus h j little difficult, but I hope you know if you under if you concentrate you can understand. Um, yeah, so this is I have left multi, multiplied this matrix the left hand side. Uh, so, again i minus h j x j beta j. So, see what I told the beta j, beta is consist of originally beta naught, beta 1, beta j and up to beta k minus 1. Then what I did is that this beta j is nothing but this beta bracket this is nothing but the same vector, you know just remove the j 1. So, it will become before it was uh, for example, it was k cross 1, now it will become k minus 1 cross 1. right? Uh, anyway, so plus i minus h j 
just this is the equation you know uh, uh, x j x j beta j plus i minus h j epsilon. Okay. So, what you know is that we know that in matrix notation uh, E equal to uh, I minus H uh, Y, I minus H Y. Okay. Then this one is uh, the residual when uh, Y is regressed on all regression except X J. So, then this one is nothing but E I j y which is equal to uh, you can check that you know uh, this quantity is equal to 0 this is 0 because because if you multiply x j here this two will cancel out then x j minus x j basically uh, and then uh, this one is nothing but uh, according to our notation this is nothing but beta j into uh, this is sort of when uh, the residual obtained when x j is regressed on the remaining regressors. So, this is E i j x and I call it epsilon i star. So, this shows that so uh, so, this is the relation between you know if if uh, the jth regressor has a linear relationship with the uh, response variable, then the two, residu two residuals will have also the linear relationship with the same slope with the same you know uh, same uh, regression coefficient. Uh, so, this shows partial residual plot should have a slope beta j. Okay, so, what we understood is that we know we, we know how to compute two residuals and we have uh, understood that the relationship between these two residuals are also linear uh, there will be a straight line uh, uh, fit between these two uh, residuals with the with the slope beta j. Uh, now, uh, I will just talk about uh, uh, different uh, pattern of the partial residual plot. So, uh, here you can see the uh, partial residual of y is along the horizontal axis sorry vertical axis and uh, the partial residual of uh, x j uh, along with the x axis and similarly here you can check that uh, the partial residual residuals are scattered around a line y equal to beta j x in both the cases and uh, if this is the pattern obtained for your example, uh, then you can conclude that, uh, that uh, there is a strong linear relationship and also it says that the less scattered indicates strong linear relationship between x j and y. Okay. So, uh, this is one uh, uh, type. So, the less scattered indicates strong linear relationship between the x j and y. So, this is how the marginal uh, role of x j in uh, on y and the other pattern is the other pattern is uh, if the pattern is like this you know in curvilinear band then uh, then 
this indicates that uh, the higher order term in x j or transformation such as you know 1 by x j or log x j may be helpful. That means, this indicates that the um, x j is uh, not linearly related to y. Uh, either you know either you have to go for the higher order term for x j or you can you have to go for some transformation on x j like log x j or 1 by x j. Okay. So, this is how you know we uh, we find the marginal role of a regressor variable uh, on the response variable uh, y and uh, I think I have to stop now. Thank you.